en Belgique. On fête aussi euh, Halloween. Et donc, c'est une fête où on doit se déguiser. On peut se déguiser déjà quand on est enfant. Donc, je me suis déjà déguisée euh, pour Halloween à l'école. Et très jeune, on peut remarquer qu'il y a une énorme différence entre les costumes pour les petits garçons ou pour les petites filles. C'est très restreint le choix qu'on peut avoir étant petite fille pour un costume. Ça sera bleu ou des couleurs pastel ou un costume de princesse, mais ça s'arrête là. Alors que les petits garçons, ben, ils peuvent avoir, euh, ils peuvent être euh, des pirates, des docteurs. Enfin, il y a énormément de choix pour les petits garçons. Et aussi, on pouvait remarquer quand on était petit que si un petit garçon voulait se déguiser en, en petite fille, tout le monde allait se moquer de lui, comme si s'habiller en fille, c'était très dégradant. Oui, je me souviens quand j'étais petite, je voulais pas vraiment m'habiller en princesse. Je trouve que c'est vraiment important dans la société de changer ce genre de choses parce que c'est ça qui va vraiment fixer les stéréotypes entre les hommes et les femmes. Euh, je pense que le, un des gros problèmes, c'est que les petites filles apprennent dès leur plus jeune âge qu'elles seront surtout acceptées et acceptées dans la société à travers leur physique. It's called Chunjie in Chinese. It's also called Spring Festival in English. It's a very traditional festival for Chinese people to sit in together with the families to welcome our new year. In this uh, traditional festival, we have a big meal, so the people will prepare a very big, big work to, to for the eating. And this work always depend on the women. There are some changes happened these days because the women think this work not just depend on me. In my family, there are some changes. So also have changes. My fathers will also do the preparing job with my mothers. They were divided work depend on what they are good at. More and more families can realize this problem. Biz e, iki tane e, geleneksel bayrama sahibiz. E, kurban bayramı ve Ramazan bayramı olmak üzere. Kurban bayramında e, bazı hayvanları e, kurban ediyoruz. E, daha sonra onları pişiriyoruz, yiyoruz. E, bunu çoğunlukla kadınlar yapıyor. E, çünkü evimize e, kutlamalar için bir sürü misafir geliyor ve biz onlara yemek hazırlamak zorundayız. Gelen misafirlere e, saygı göstergesi olarak evimizin e, temiz olması gerekiyor, güzel kıyafetler giymemiz gerekiyor. Bu bütün insanlar için geçerli bir şey. Fakat bunun bütün yükünü kadınlar çekiyor çünkü e, temizliği kadınlar yapıyor. Kıyafetlerin ütüsü, temizlenmesi, yıkanması e, bu bir hafta, e, bir aylık bir süreç. E, bu bir aylık süreçte e, sabahtan hatta geceden akşama kadar oruç tutmak zorundayız. Yemek yemiyoruz. E, ve akşama e, iftar yemeği hazırlıyoruz. Bunu da genelde kadınlar yapıyor. Çünkü e, geceleri sahur yapıyoruz oruca başlamadan önce. Mesela biz bazı dönemlerde oruç tutmayabiliyoruz. E, eğer özel günlerimizdeysek eğer regliysek oruç tutmayabiliyoruz ama bazen mesela benim annem oruç tutmamasına rağmen kalkıp geceleri sahur hazırlayıp iftar hazırlamak zorunda kalıyor. Bu, bu, bu bütün yükler gene kadının üzerinde oluyor. Yardım edenleri var ama aslında bu ülkemizde biraz da böyle bu çok da hoş görülen bir şey değil. Erkekler her zaman bir tık geride durur ve kadınlar bu konuda ön plana çıkarlar. So this tradition is usually done on Easter Monday. Based on this tradition, young men are supposed to go to every single house where there is a young single woman and sprinkle them with water and whip them with willow benches. Sprinkle, however, in Slovakia usually doesn't mean a little bit of water. However, it often includes few buckets of ice cold water. Or if a girl lives next to next to this, next to river, she will be put in the river. However, this is often done by force, and a girl is held usually by two men to prevent her from running away. It is based on the celebration of the spring, and therefore water and the willow branches. Uh, supposed to give the girl health, youth, 
and to maintain her fertility. They are weaker than men and therefore they need to be helped to be healthy and as well they need to be helped to be fertile and therefore they are responsible, they are the only responsible for infertility in families. What is actually funny a little bit is that guys in a return they are rewarded, they get either chocolate, painted eggs, sometimes money are included and they get to drink shots of local spirits. Um, they often get to eat with the family of the girl as well. I watched news and I saw some messages that it's masochist and it's uh, made for men to, to find a reason to whip the girls or their wives. However, uh, the prevalent idea is that this is a big tradition. It's supposed to be made for fun. It's a celebration of spring. There is no bad meaning behind it. I think tradition should be kept, uh, especially when uh, the tradition is as old as this particular one. It comes from pre-Christian period uh, and therefore it is more than 1,000 years old. However, the fact that girls, many of my friends, I heard from them that they really hate this tradition and that they would like to completely avoid it. It should be considered that not everybody takes it as fun. Maybe if it's a celebration of spring, maybe we can all start pouring water over our, over our bodies if we believe that this is going to bring us health, youth and fertility and beauty because I think that both men and women deserve to, to have all these attributes. It's called the puberty ceremony, which in Sinhalese is called like a big girl party kind of, because it's uh, that you be, become a big girl now. It's been celebrated like since you got your first period, we have to stay like around seven days in a room, uh, almost like approximately seven days. And we cannot see any men and the men can't see us. So actually for me, I had to stay like seven days uh, in the room and not seeing my parents and any of the men. It's not like exactly seven days. It depends on her horoscope, like the zodiac sign and the time which she got her first period. So it's like we go to an astrologist and then like he decides the time, like the time you have to come out, the day, what color you have to wear, like at what time you should take a bath and everything. When it comes to Sri Lanka, like all the relatives, cousins, friends, like everyone who you know, like they'll be in the party kind of like to tell tell the other people that I have a girl like she can be married in like a few years time and that she can bow a baby because now she's uh, in like uh, in her adolescence. Having my first period is not like something to like say like to the whole world which is like kind of a natural thing for every girl. Tradition should always be respected because it comes from like many years. But what I think is like it, a girl shouldn't be forced to do it just because of it of the tradition. Maybe we should have the the choice like to if we want to do it and not. And like I prefer. Like